what I'm going to be doing is um, I'm going to service this snare drum in the same way as I would do it if I was out on tour. Uh, you, you get time um, after you've unpacked all the stuff from the tour bus or the vans or whatever it is and you do the sound check at the end of the sound check everyone normally goes off to dinner um, so what you'll be doing what I'll be doing is instead of going off for dinner I'll go and grab some food and then go straight back to the the drum riser and set out the snare drum um, so uh, I've borrowed the snare drum and it's a beautiful old um, tamer snare drum that belongs to uh, my mate Andy Edwards. Um, you'll be able to go Google Andy Edwards. Um, he used to play drums for Robert Plant, uh, used to play drums for um, IQ and if you look there, plays for a band called Rain. Uh, Check out the uh, Singularity. It's one of their albums. Really good. Do check them out. They are really good. Um, and he's been kind enough to lend me two snare drums. Uh, a This beautiful 14-inch um, Tamer snare drum and a 13-inch snare drum, which I don't know what that is. I'll have to have a look at that uh, a bit later. Set up to do work on the snare drum. When I'm normally on a drum... Uh, drum riser. I normally get some bog roll and it's quite readily available. I'm sure you can find it in every venue. But you get your bog roll and you roll it out like that and you pop it down like so and you do it twice. So, and you'll see why I do that in a bit, and I need a third bit, all impacted, quite small. Okay. Do you know what, it would help if you find out how, what this sounds like without me doing anything so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna go and run upstairs and get a drumstick so there you go that's what it's all oh, good grief heard what it sounds like um, unserviced um, it's got aquarium heads top and bottom by the look of it they've been on there for I'm going to say five, six years, so they're probably worse for wear now. Um, so we're going to completely service it with, with new heads. I'm going to start at the main uh, spring. I don't know why, probably because it's just the way it's sitting at the moment. So I take it a whole turn down. And I go to the opposite corner. I take it down a whole turn. Then back to next to where I was previous. I'm going to take it a whole turn down and again now I just keep working my way around like that a whole turn on each lug nut I call them lug nuts some people call them tension rods some people call them tuning rods I'm old school they were called lug nuts when I was a kid I call them lug nuts now that's what I call them so So when you get to the point that, if you can hear that, there's a movement in the hoop, the actual hoop that's holding the batter head down, just take, start taking the, the nuts off. So, now this is where I, what I do with the lug nuts, and I put them on the top, um, let me bring that so you can just down the seat, on the top, 
the top roll of toilet paper. They go round in clockwise. I take them off completely. I've got to show you this as well. The, the drum key made by Pearl. These weights make it so much easier to take the drum uh, lugs off really quickly. You pop it on top and and spin it instead of having to turn it bit by bit, fully by hand. They uh, they 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 come off really easy, and it's so much nice to tune it to take uh, to just just get get a bit of speed up when you trying to dismantle a kit. Okay, so that's ready to come off. It lifts off nice and easy. Um, it's still got absolutely no life in it, that drum it has. That is only going to be useful for... Um, that's going to be useful for Eos. It's actually blown through. Uh, which one can I go for? I don't know whether you can see that, if I do it on the reflection, there's actually a hole in it, which is why they've put the, tape, the gaffer tape on it, to actually try and fix the hole. Well, that must have been a, a gig fix. Right then. So, that is one hoop down. So I've got the hoops. Crikey. The weight of these hoops is is, uh, is is quite significant. I would like to be able to try and weigh them, but I don't have a scale wide enough to to lift these. But they're they're quite cool. They're quite heavy. Oh, maybe, oh, I can't go there. Can go there? There we go. It can go there. So when I'm doing the cleaning the hoops down. Uh, sorry, cleaning the shells down. I like to dismantle the whole thing. I like to take the snare chain off as well. Now on this particular one, on this tamer one, it's uh, held with together with a ribbon. So if I can show you that, the key off. Uh, held together with a ribbon. So I need to take that off. Once I've taken the snare chain off, I'm now going to tighten these back up because the the little nuts that actually hold these bands on here are so small they're easy to get lost. So I never lose one because I always leave them back in there. And I'm going to do the same. One thing I can tell um, is that all of the threads uh, need cleaning on this uh, snare drum. Uh, every single one of them, they're all they're a bit, a bit gritty. So uh, I'm going to try and get them cleaned down. Oh, this is way off. The reason why I'm taking these off opposites is so I don't warp the hoop. Unfortunately, I have a sneaking suspicion that this hoop is already... Oh, is already warped. Oh, come on. Hmm, never had that before. So... Oh, wow. 
bit more pressure than I thought it was going to take. side there is so far down it's actually taken the the whole head has been put on is, is off on on a squiff so all that side there is really riveled whereas this side's nice perfectly smooth so it's obviously had a bit of a beating uh, tension too quickly in, during a gig situation by the look of it and not corrected at the end of the gig. but they're actually a bolt and that is mucky look at the dirt coming off that that is minging now some people have said why does my snare drum and why do my drums get so messy during tours and gigs put that back. Uh, usually it's because in certain venues, if the venues are quite small, they're right next to the smoke machine. And the smoke machine, in some venues, even though they, they shouldn't use oil, but um, they use a particular oil that gets all horrible and crabby all over your drums. And uh, it's just messy. Um, often that's like it. Or you've got damp where you store them and that damp doesn't leave the drums for when you go somewhere and they get all dust from the venue and they just pick it up and collect it these won't even spin properly these won't oh look at the state of that Now then, that'll do. I'll come back to that. shake off the spiders outside of the, from inside the, the snare drum but hey what the heck so this has got a few holes in it and they're tiny tiny little holes so you don't want to be using this one again unfortunately so I've got to bin that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the these things uh, some people call them lugs, some people call them tensioners, some people call them um, uh, tuning stays. I've heard them called all kinds of things. I call them lugs, again, because I'm old school. So I'm going to take off all the lugs. One thing I'm not taking off is I'm not taking off the, uh, the chain mechanism. Reason is, if I can use that camera inside there you've got some um, crazy looking bolts nuts sorry that I'm not going to be happy about taking off uh, so I'm going to leave those but I'm going to work around everything else so 
uh, need to get myself a screwdriver. And my tabernacle of empirical evidence at the back of here. So I take them, the, the screw out and I leave it in the center of the of the shell for the moment. Take the second one out, but don't take it out fully. I get the back of the screwdriver and then a tap. Surprise, this thing's don't want to go anywhere. There we go. <clears throat> now we'll pop the same screw that came out of there that goes back in exactly the same place. And goes in line there and I'll repeat the process all the way around got the shell as broken down as I'm unwilling to go today uh, I just check the hoop the actual the edge of the, the shell sorry not the hoop where the hoop rests uh, there's a bit of a dent there Dent there. There's a bit of a dent there. Now let me have a look at that and see if I don't know if you can actually see that. I don't think you can. It's just there, it's there to there. So it's um it's a tiny little tiny little dent, but it can cause a bit of a harmonic which I don't like. So I'm going to give the, the hoop a bit of a wipe up. I say one thing about Tamer snare drums. The workmanship in this is absolutely beautiful. I'm an amateur carpenter and the, the workmanship in this is just lovely. Um, Nothing's rough in it. It's all nice, smooth jointing. It's, it's lovely, and even there, it's it's really nice. Sometimes they they leave them quite rough. Some manufacturers leave them quite rough on the inside, but the work that's gone into this is is beautiful. I absolutely love this. Quite jealous. So, once you've uh, sorted the snare drum out and taken all the bits off you need to polish it now i was going to use my mr sheen unfortunately i couldn't find it 
and I think I'd run out. So I have lovely neighbours who let me then pledge. Beautify it, enhancing polish. Classic. Right. That's good enough. how strong pledge was um, reminds me why I used Mr Sheen uh, when you're asthmatic you kind of discover what you can use and can't use but I'm very grateful to my neighbours for lending me the pledge that to uh, just do what it does I'm gonna come back and let that calm down um, I'm gonna come back and and polish it up afterwards and let it do what it needs to do when you've uh, left it to soak I mean it's a bit <laughs> it's a bit pokey in here still but it's about 20 minutes after uh, I'd sprayed it um, so what I'm going to do to use to polish it is this stuff. Um, it's it, it's a sort of cloth you would get from a gun shop to uh, use to clean in your for cleaning your guns and down inside the barrels. Um, I use I use quite a bit of gun maintenance kit. Um, I use. Uh, Bisley gun oil. If I don't use that one, I will use that one there. Liquid Molly, is that with gun tech? Um, but um, and there's various different gun uh, gun oils that I use for different parts of it. The um, gun oils on the I use gun oil on the um, the base pedals because the actual um, uh, the, the the spinning. Um, the spinning axle um, you, you want the least amount of friction as possible but in this case I'm using um, gun cloth I don't know what you'd call it but um, um, I need to cut a bit off about that much I do and <laughs> Got a workshop like this, and you don't have a pair of scissors. I'll be back. <laughs> so, what I normally do is use that much, and I normally roll it up into a really hard ball like that. So, probably about the size of your, the, the end of your thumb. And get that on camera. Basically, a polish. And I normally start at the, the logo. This has got a lot of scratches and dents and dings in it. And it's a bit beaten up, but it is nice and shiny now in that part. Now, when you're trying to get underneath the <coughs> snake mechanism, if you don't take it off, can be quite tricky, but it should be fine. 
<coughs> should be easy enough to do for a, a basic job. Now, I've done all I'm going to do on that. You can see it's actually quite shiny on the actual reflection from the window. So I'm going to put that in the house, and I'll come to doing all the all the furniture that's actually on the the shelf. So we've got the the shell um, broken down. Granted, I've left the uh, chain mechanism on it. Um, it's all broken down. The furniture's all off it, or the hardware, whichever you want to call it. And the shell is all nice and polished. I'm going to leave that there for today. Uh, um, you've just got a basic idea of what it is to take off the, all the all the, the the junk from a from a shell. Um, thank you very much for watching continue with this on the next video uh, please like and subscribe if you like it if you can be bothered that is and um, I'll see you on the next video thank you very much